जीरो पॉइंट टू फोर हो गई है गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून साइकिल सो हेलो सर सो ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एन आई डी आई एम वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस ट्वेंटी फाइव वर्जन ऑफ द वेबिनार एंड प्रोबेबली इट्स द लास्ट वन ऑफ आर दिस वेबिनार सीरीज जर्नी and uh, sir we will be uh, i think i'm calling uh, sir so that uh, we can have we can start the session i'm just checking with sir ah uh, yeah okay just give me 2 minutes बाबा से नहीं छादे कर नीचे हेलो हाँ हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून या वेलकम वेलकम सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून हाउ आर यू सर सो दिस इज आर सेकंड वेबिनार टुगेदर विद सर and uh, our participants will defi definitely looking for you uh, because you will be today shedding light on the precursors uh, already we have a earlier session on early warning basically on ham radio that how this uh, radio uh, particularly in disaster management what is the role of the ham and how it works as a early warning so today we will be talking about the earthquake early warning and uh, specifically we will listen on the aspect of the precursor from sir sir has very huge expertise on this so thank you sir for joining us today uh, and within a very short notice and saikat sir uh, welcome you all uh, and uh, to definitely we will be uh, we will uh, glad to listen from you please share your experience before starting the session uh, before uh, with the formal session so just we want to have a informal uh, round of talk so that our participants will able to know that what today we will be talking about so please sir uh, thank you ma'am hello uh, yes sir please yes. continue yes sir you are audible please uh, share your your expertise just uh, uh, let us uh, see that uh, how uh, let us have brief introduction about uh, today's session and then we go for uh, detailed presentation okay maybe uh, uh, sir is facing some technical issue a uh, cost please uh, share your expertise okay uh, let us have some informal discussion let uh, only 39 participants we expect more participants to join in few minutes yes um, of course uh, cost up is a 
uh, he has been into this webinar series several times. And formally, of course, in this way, uh, this is second time, but in other session also, especially in Ham Radio, uh, we could uh, get uh, his expert viewpoints uh, as a panel uh, in the panel. And more so, uh, recently we had uh, more interaction with him as well as uh, his group. I think Shrekatji is here. Your face uh, is yes, looking sir, yes, sir. a little darker. Yeah. Of, uh, I think uh, we want to see you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, some, uh, light, uh, light is sir. So, Isme uh, kya hai? Ye jo we mix it in Hindi and English so that our participants they come from. Uh, different background across the country, across the globe, uh, but uh, being in our country, so we take advantage of using our national, uh, say, bhasha language, Hindi, uh, because it is uh, acceptable to everyone. So we'll mix uh, this conversation, all, all this, and uh, just taking this uh, into earthquake, early warning, and precursor. Uh, हमने इसमें क्या किया है साइंटिफिक स्टडी रिसर्च प्रेडिक्शन प्रोजेक्शंस एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन ये तो जब से हम यहाँ पे एस सिविलाइजेशन स्टार्ट हुआ है इवन एरिस्टोटल फोर्थ सेंचुरी बीसी तब वो वेदर से उन्होंने रिलेट करने का कोशिश किया है तो uh, हमें लगता है ये आर्थिक आर्ली वार्निंग और आर्ली वार्निंग फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ हजार्ड और डिजास्टर इट में भी वेदर बिकॉज़ वेदर वी हैव गॉट सेवरल सच एडवांसमेंट इन दैट सो ऑलमोस्ट मिनट टू मिनट वेदर प्रेडिक्शन प्रोजेक्शंस वार्निंग दैट सिमिलरली फॉर फ्लड सो व्हेन वी मेंशन ऑल दीस थिंग्स एक्सेप्ट आर्थक्वेक्स I think many other like Glove has happened uh, in the month of uh, in the last uh, this uh, recently in Sikkim. So Glove ke baare mein bhi uh, of course early warning kaise kiya jaye? Volcanic eruption ka kya hai? So there are so many natural phenomena that happening. So aaj ka jo ye charcha ka vishay hai, especially on uh, two experts here. Who are uh, Shaikaji? Apna kuch ap, uh, just initial parichay dije. Mare is forum me. Chahe Hindi me. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Hello everyone. My uh, name is Shaikad Das. Hai. Basically, I am electronics engineer. Hai. Uh, last four years, se earthquake uh, prediction ke liye, early warning system ke liye, hamlo yar ionization system ka upar me kam kar rahe hai. और बेसिकली एट दिस मोमेंट हम लोग का एक ही स्टेशन रनिंग है और वो आप वेस्ट बंगाल नियर सिलीगुड़ी में लोकेटेड है या सिलीगुड़ी वेस्ट बंगाल हां यस यस ओके तो और हम लोग कई दफा चर्चा हुआ है इधर इवन कल भी हमने यस सर जी के साथ टेलीफोनिक कन्वर्सेशन किया है तो आज ये पहला मौका है कि आपको हम अपना एनआईडीएम uh, के इस वेबिनार में uh, आपको सामने लाने का एक प्रयास जस्ट हमने किया है तो आपको बहुत धन्यवाद दैट थैंक यू सर थैंक यू मुझे uh, इस विषय में बहुत गर्व महसूस होता है क्या कितना कठिनाई को सामने रखते हुए आप एन कोस्तब जी जो है कोस्तब जी यहां गुरगांव में रहते हैं और yes, कोस्तब जी पूरा दुनिया को सैटेलाइट स्टेशन सैटेलाइट वगैरह क्या मूवमेंट कैसे होते हैं वो अपना एक शेयर करेंगे अभी तक आपके साथ जा करके वो पूरा सिस्टम को देखने का मौका नहीं मिला है लेकिन अब तो जरूर मिलेंगे एंड मिल करके केवल चाय पानी के साथ आजकल क्या है इट इज नॉट द क्वेश्चन ऑफ बिजनेस और एनीथिंग our effort is to bring that whatever effort that you are making and aapko aapka jo effort ko duniya ke samne lane ka ye ek platform hai an idm ke through hame mila hai to hame is vishay mein koi aisa koi doubt nahi hai aap jahan pe jahan se bhi ho jis level pe bhi ho 
इसमें हमारे से हम सरकार इस तरह से नहीं बोल रहे वी आर ऑल ह्यूमन बीइंग हम एक अपना अपना जो फुटप्रिंट इस दुनिया में रखे हुए हैं मुझे लगता है आप दोनों जो है इस 25 पच्चीस हुआ वेबिनार सीरीज में एक एक मेरे लिए क्या एन के लिए क्या पूरा देशवासी और पूरा दुनिया के लिए एक नया खोज है हमें मिला है इसलिए बार बार उस सब जी के पास आ, हम उनका चाहते हैं उनको सुनना चाहते हैं और उनका जो इस विषय में आर्थिक रिकर्सर्स के बारे में जो आ, आप आ, कुछ अपना घर में अपना इंस्ट्रूमेंट के साथ आप जो ऑब्जर्वेशन करते रहते हैं और हमसे शेयर करते रहते हैं तो और उसके साथ शेखत जी भी जुड़े हुए हैं तो हमने कुछ आ, उस विषय में आपसे संक्षिप्त रूप से आज मेन जो एक प्रेजेंटेशन में अदर एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ आर्थिक अर्ली वार्निंग के बारे में बताएंगे लेकिन हम पहले चाहेंगे पहला कुछ मिनट तक आप अपना अपना जो काम है उसके संक्षिप्त रूप से आ, क्या उसमें डिसरप्शन इन द टेक्नोलॉजी एंड नो हाउ विथ सिंप्लिसिटी एंड विथ मिनिमल यू नो यू से बेसिक इनमें बेसिक इंस्ट्रूमेंट क्योंकि सैकत जी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक इंजीनियर है मैं तो सिविल इंजीनियर हूँ लेकिन वो सब भूल चुके हैं इंजीनियरिंग में क्या पढ़ा है पढ़ाया है और रोज रोज नया चीज सीखने का एक बहुत आनंद आता है उत्सुकता होता है तो आज का ये जो वेबिनार है हम चाहते हैं हमारे जो यहाँ पे जो लोग जुड़े हुए हैं उनके लिए एक नया सीख मिलेगा नया इंस्पिरेशन मिलेगा तो आ, जी आप जस्ट दो चार आप शब्द में आप कुछ चाहेंगे राइट सर थैंक यू सो मच सर एंड थैंक्स फॉर द इंट्रोडक्शन गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल प्रेजेंट ऑन द वेबिनार एंड आई थिंक देर ऑलमोस्ट फोर्टी फाइव अटेंडीज आई कैन सी and uh, i think it's live on youtube also so many many other uh, viewers will also be there and chandra char uh, thank you so much and uh, also uh, coordination coordinator uh, thank you ma'am uh, for arranging this uh, yes sir actually humne dekha hai sir bahut sare experiments hote rehta hai but uh, a lot of things hum kar sakte hai jo jiska रिजल्ट्स अर्थक्वेक या बड़ा इवेंट अर्थक्वेक जैसा इवेंट के लिए एक प्रिकर्सर बन करके रह जाए एंड वो प्रिकर्सर से हम एक अलर्ट ट्रिगर कर सकते हैं एंड दिस कैन कम एज अ टूल अलर्टिंग टूल फॉर टेकिंग केयर ऑफ द पीपल अराउंड दैट एरिया सेफ्टी देख सकते हैं पहले से सो so, ये जो टाइम पीरियड है सर एक्चुअली कोई भी अलर्ट सिस्टम के लिए हम हम आजकल देखते हैं बहुत सारा ऐप्स आ गया हमारा मोबाइल में ऐप है सो hmm. अर्थ so, को एक जब होता है उसी टाइम पे हमारे पास में एटलीस्ट तीन चार सेकंड के अंदर में पांच सेकंड के अंदर में हमारे पास में अर्ली मतलब वार्निंग्स आ जाता है कि कुछ हुआ है कहीं पे एंड बट uh, हम लोग जो uh, कोशिश कर रहे हैं सर uh, जो हमारा एक्सपेरिमेंट्स है हमारा जो उसका रिजल्ट्स है द वे आवर स्टेशन आर फंक्शनिंग हम लोग uh, एक घंटा दो घंटा पहले से हम लोग प्रेडिक्ट कर रहे हैं कि एक इवेंट होने जा रहा है सो वी गेट एनफ चांस वी गेट एनफ यू नो टाइम टू टेक इट टू अ सेफ्टी मेजर हो सकता है उस टाइम पे बहुत बड़ा उस एरिया में बहुत कुछ नहीं हो जाए बट एटलीस्ट हमारे पास पे सिग्नल से पता चलता है कि उस जगह पे एक इवेंट के लिए सिग्नल आ चुके हैं एंड वी कैन अलर्ट द पीपल आउट देयर एंड वी कैन टेक देम इनटू सेफ्टी एटलीस्ट एक सेफ्टी लेवल से पता चलता है कि वो लोग घर के अंदर में है तो बाहर आ सकते हैं स्कूल में स्टूडेंट्स है तो ग्राउंड में बाहर आ सकते हैं Uh, मैं ये नहीं बोल रहा हूँ कि एक घंटा पहले uh, कोई सिग्नल आ गया और हमने वहाँ पे यू नो ऑल द रिसोर्स से वहाँ पे रिलीफ भेजना शुरू कर दिए ये नहीं बट एक एक पहले से सिग्नल आता है तो उससे वी आर अलर्ट देर कैन बी सम इवेंट आउट देयर बट इसका मतलब ये भी नहीं है सर uh, कि uh, uh, कि हम उससे ना 
घबराहट हो जाए किसी को कि इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट इट इट हैज टू बी टेकन इन अ वे सर आपने देखा होगा कि अभी कितने सारे अर्थक्वेक्स uh, एक के बाद एक uh, हमारा नॉर्दर्न रीजन पे आ रहा है हमारा लेफ्ट ऑफ द कंट्री पे आता है राइट ऑफ द कंट्री पे आता है कभी अफगानिस्तान में आ रहा है कभी हम बांग्लादेश के साइड पे देख रहे हैं द एंटायर बेल्ट देर आर थ्री फोर अर्थक्वेक्स हैपनिंग इन द होल डे एक सुबह होता है एक आफ्टरनून के हो रहा है एक शाम को हो रहा है देर 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 लॉट ऑफ एक्टिविटीज सो इस एक्टिविटी में अगर हम लोग थोड़ा सा अलर्ट लेकर के चले तो इट इट विल डेफिनेटली बी अ पॉइंट वेयर वी कैन सेव लॉट ऑफ लाइफ एक्चुअली तो साइकत भी है हमारे टीम में एंड साइकत एक्चुअली सिलीगुड़ी के पास में रहता है uh, उसके पास से नेपाल uh, का जो रीजन है सर उस साइड में uh, बहुत सारे एक्टिविटीज होता है वो काफी इजीली पिकअप हो जाता है मैं गुड़गांव में रहता हूँ बट uh, साइकत नेपाल के पास में मतलब सिलीगुड़ी के रहता है तो वहाँ से uh, जो सिग्नल्स हमें मिलते हैं वो काफी एक्यूरेट होते हैं और स्टेशन uh, ऐसे होते हैं सर वहाँ से अगर हमें एक घंटा डेढ़ घंटा आगे एक इंफॉर्मेशन मिल गया तो हम उसको आगे पब्लिश करके एक अलर्ट के हिसाब से आगे पब्लिश हाँ. करते हैं सो so, ये है सर सो स्टेशन बहुत छोटे छोटे हैं सर बड़ा बड़ा खूब ज़्यादा कॉस्टली नहीं है उसमें हर एक जगह पे इम्प्लीमेंट हो सकते हैं एंड जितने सारे डेटा आएंगे उतना ज़्यादा प्रिसाइज होते जाएगा Yeah. अभी भी हम लोग वी आर ऑल डूइंग इट एज एक्सपेरिमेंटल बेसिस बट वी वांट टू गेट इनटू अ मॉडल वेयर वी रेप्लिकेट द स्टेशन एंड एटलीस्ट 25 30 40 50 स्टेशन हर एक गांव में एक एक करके स्टेशन लग जाए एंड सर uh, ये बैटरी से चलता है या इसके hmm. पास में uh, मतलब सोलर पावर से ये स्टेशन पावर्ड होता है तो इसके लिए कोई जरूरी नहीं है कि इलेक्ट्रिसिटी पावर होना चाहिए Uh, एक सोप बॉक्स जैसा जितना होता है सोप बॉक्स uh, साबुन का जो डिब्बी होता है उतना सा बड़ा uh, एक कैबिनेट के अंदर में पूरा स्टेशन आ जाता है सर पूरा चीज उसी जगह पे आ जाता है मतलब द सेंसर एंड द मॉड्यूल्स आर सेपरेट एंटेना सिस्टम जो है वो सेपरेट है वो जमीन के अंदर में हम लगाते हैं और वहां से सिग्नल पिकअप करते हैं बट यू नो इसके लिए कोई मैन पावर नहीं चाहिए एक बार इंस्टॉल करने के बाद में कि वहां पर बैठे हुए देखना देखना पड़ेगा रिमोट में काम करेगा रिमोट इंफॉर्मेशन भेजेगा एंड एक सेंट्रलाइज uh, जगह पे ये आपको डैशबोर्ड पे दिख जाएगा कि कहाँ पे क्या मूवमेंट्स uh, हो रहा है और क्या चीज के लिए हम सिग्नल्स आ रहे हैं वहां पे एयर आयोनाइजेशन बोलते हैं हम इसको उसको मेजर करते हैं सर एयर आयोनाइजेशन मेजर करके जितना डेटा एक्यूरेट होते जाता है हमें दो घंटा डेढ़ घंटा पहले हमें सिग्नल मिल जाता है कि कुछ एक इवेंट होने जा रहा है Okay. So I think आप एक बार सर पिकअप कीजिए देन उसके बाद में मैं आपको स्लाइड्स okay. बीच बीच में में हम रुकेंगे आपको हम बुलाएंगे इस विषय में राइट सर यहाँ पे क्या हो रहा है इन दिस वेबिनार में हमारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स को हम पूरा बैकग्राउंड में रख रहे हैं उनके साथ डायरेक्ट इंटरनेक्शन करने के लिए हमने ये स्ट्रेटजी लिया है कभी भी किसी भी विषय में चर्चा होता है तो हम उनको डायरेक्टली अपना पैनल में लेके आ जाते हैं तो इसमें जो भी पार्टिसिपेंट्स है आप में से करीब फिफ्टी प्लस आप में से कोई चाहेंगे पैनल में आप अभी आना चाहेंगे तो आप प्लीज अपना हाथ रेज कीजिए आपको पैनल में लेके आ जाते हैं मैम एक बार चेक कीजिएगा कि यूट्यूब में ये एक्चुअली लाइव नहीं आ रहा है थैंक यू सर आपने बहुत अच्छे तरीके से मतलब ब्रीफ दिया कि कैसे वो अर्ली वार्निंग कैसे होता है एंड हाउ मतलब जरूरी क्या होता है कि हम लोग बहुत फ्राइटन हो जाते हैं अर्थ को एक्स एंड दीज डेज द इंटेंसिटी इज क्वाइट इंक्रीजिंग सो इट्स नॉट टू फेयर बट इफ वी टेक सम प्रिकॉशनरी मेजर्स सम अलर्ट मेजर्स सो दैट कैन बी वी कैन ईजिली बी टैकल्ड आउट फ्रॉम दिस सिनेरियोज सो थैंक यू सर डेफिनेटली विल बी लिसनिंग योर a uh, brief introduction and your elaborative work uh, during the down the webinar so so the, with the permission of the chairperson and all the guest speakers 
I would like to uh, just put the put this start the session formally and this uh, make this session as a live. Should I? Uh, okay. Can I okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, again, good afternoon to all of you. And I, Abhipsha Mohanty, young professional at NIDM. Today, I'm uh, formally starting the session, and I welcomes you all. in this 25th version of the webinar series which will be initiated on around 19th may and it's a, a initiative by ri division of nidm so it's a, a great pleasure that i introduce our uh, ed nidm uh, who is a, is a, who is a very distinguished person and without his support we can't able to initiate this webinar series so thank you sir and uh, uh, the dr sales kumar agarwal spear heading the initiatives as uh, under the ministry of uh, housing and urban affairs currently he is leading as the executive director of bmtpc and the visionary professor sk singh who serves as the vice chancellor of rajasthan technical university kota he is also the chairman of the institute of engineers i would like to extend my uh, special greetings to mr kostav saha deputy chief project manager vipul limited and mr uh, saikat das electrical engineer seventh through digital private limited so uh, lastly i would uh, want to uh, extend my uh, gratitude to professor chandan ghosh who is the chairperson and speaker of this session head resident for the division at nidm and uh, not least the but i want to welcome all the participants and uh, without your support and consistent effort we can't able to continue this webinar series so thank you for all for joining hands in this webinar series before we start the session i'd like to give you some a brief information about this webinar it is a uh, live streaming and it is initiated by the nidm's ri division and today's webinar's uh, youtube live streaming link is already shared in the chat box you can share you can uh, if you have missed out any of our session so you can catch us live on the youtube link and during the course of the webinar if you have any queries and you want to have a direct discussion with our uh, a guest speakers and chair person just simply you can raise your hand so that i can put you on a panel list for the direct discussion with our speakers so thank you for your attention and we will look forward for your active uh, participation throughout this event and uh, today as already goser has mentioned that uh, today we will be talking about that how earthquake early warning and precursors work basically we will be dealing about that how sensors will be leading us towards this earthquake and how the people will uh, enhance themselves the uh, improvise the early warning system with the integration of the technological measures there is nothing to frighten about this early warning though uh, these days the intensity of the earthquake is quite increasing over the period of time so uh, if we take some measures some precautionary measures then we can able to tackle this scenarios very easily so today our expert uh, and our uh, chairperson will shed light in this domain also and uh, earthquake as we know it's a natural phenomenon that have very huge devastating consequences however the advancement in science and technology provides us the means to detect the and predict the sensors in our earlier webinar series also goser has already mentioned that how the shake alert system and how the integration of sensors uh, even the lora sensors we can able to detect the earthquake at every uh, point and every uh, locations of our where we were locating or and the identify the fault lines so this can be very easily uh, carried out and this not only allows us to mitigate the impact of the infrastructure but more importantly it gives us the uh, the precious seconds or the minutes that needed to protect the human lives so thank you without a further ado i would like to uh, invite our chairperson to shed a more elaborative light on this aspect over to you sir okay uh, let me uh, go into uh, shall i share the slide yes sir sure sir sure okay i think the youtube is also uh, to be put live i think people are waiting for that and it will be very helpful for all the people watching on youtube yes sir i have already put it on live okay okay yes sir it's visible okay i think with all uh, uh, respect to panelists over here that uh, the recent uh, 
just a brief uh, sharing of what uh, Postabji and Saikat ji is doing. Both are doing. And uh, uh, the details, of course, will be coming up very soon. Uh, whatever conventional aspects that we look at about uh, putting the seismometer across the country or even across the globe, or us data ko kis tarah se hamare samne mobile pe kya internet mein share kiya jata hai. So I will give those description kyunki jab Aristotle ke samay se baat ho raha hai aur hamare agar Quranic usme bhi jayenge to there are lots of reference are there. Hum usme uh, uska reference bohut jada na lete huye kis tarah se uh, let us see that when the earth was considered with our scientific understanding, uh, earth was considered to be a flat ground, football field kind of things. From then, uh, we come to know that it is around the sun. So a lot of things through science, through experiment, through observation, and through sharing of knowledge and know-how, we are able to decipher and we are able to know that what is reality. And this reality ke piche, uh, kitana scientific, of course, hum us distribangi se jab in chizo ko hamesha dekte aye hain. And to the current stage of knowledge and know how sharing ka jo process hai. So, isme to it is uh, really, really fantastic and exciting uh, that our uh, being born as human being uh, to that extent, I think we are fortunate enough and we must. Thank uh, to the sustained effort of uh, each and everyone who, by the passage of time, uh, that have evolved various techniques and know-how, and we are able to share and comprehend, and then trying to put our own viewpoints uh, in our own areas of research and understanding. So, isliye aaj ka ye jo topic hai. It is, I think, no other topic except volcan how Earth started, how Big Bang has happened, or what are the black hole, what are the dark matter, and uh, what is the universe, and what is Milky Way, what is the weight of the all the stars, and finally, latest one, which is, uh, you know, we have come to know about the uh, uh, gravitation wave, uh, gravity waves, and based on that, even. Nobel Prize is also given recently. So, हम जैसे-जैसे हम मतलब इस विषय में चर्चा करते आए हैं, I think uh, it is something uh, really, uh, especially on the earthquake and what are the current development, what are the precursors, and how they have shaped our life, and how we are still evolving with various tools and techniques and observation, not only inside the earth, but jo, uh, or even how the earth is related through its atmosphere and what are the electromagnetic wave and what is the ionosphere, that part will take it. That is not my subject area, but uh, उस विषय में जब चर्चा होंगे हम उनसे आ, उस विषय में थोड़ा और ज्ञान बर्दन करने का अपना जो पार्टिसिपेंट्स है उनके साथ शेयर करने का कोशिश करेंगे ऑनलाइन टुडे तो आ, पहले ही हम ये करते हैं क्या ये जो व्हाट कॉजेस डैमेज टू द बिल्डिंग इट इज अर्थक्वेक अब बिल्डिंग हम ऊपर का देखते हैं नीचे का भी देखने का है जैसे बुर्ज खलीफा और बुर्ज दुबई जो टावर है उसको ऊपर जितना दिखता है नीचे भी कम नहीं है और जितना हम ब्रिज अगर आप बनाते हैं वो ऊपर जितना दिखते हैं उसका कोई गुना ज्यादा नीचे उसका फाउंडेशन करना होता है ऑन द रिवर फ्रंट बट आम तौर पे हम देखते हैं एक बिल्डिंग वाइब्रेशन होता है अरे आर्थक्वेक आ गया है चलो भागो नीचे जाओ कुछ करो तो इस विषय में एनआईडीएम और मेनी अदर इंस्टीट्यूशंस इन द कंट्री कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग अवेयरनेस बिल्डिंग हेल्थ असेसमेंट और उसमें फिर बिल्डिंग इंफॉर्मेशन मॉडलिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन क्राइटेरिया रेट्रोफिटिंग ऐसे तमाम विषय में इनफैक्ट मेनी ऑफ आवर टॉपिक आर 
uh, have been uh, discussing on many other topics related to buildings, constructions, and uh, intelligent uh, construction, or even now digital constructions, or even health uh, health mapping of the building, the, the way that we do the health mapping for our human body. Uh, so, Ustara se bohut sare areas or branches of knowledge and know-how has come, but mostly uh, we see that uh, it is uh, above the ground we are more concerned. And because makan banaya hai, ground ke upari banaya hai, to wo jab hillne lagta hai, to hume lagta hai kya ye kya hai, earthquake kahan se aagya aur hota raha hai. Aur iske liye uh, uh, we are continuously updating uh, about uh, this earthquake and what is the country is looking forward or is bishe mein ye bhi dekhenge pura duniya mein kya charcha ho raha hai kahan pe hum success hue hain kis kis country mein early warning ke bare mein uh, unhone kya kya kadam liya hai so or where we are you know, under the ministry of earth sciences aur usme kya kya naya research project agar ho raha hai or in near future, jaise uh, artificial intelligence is mein kya role play kar rahe hain, karne wale hain. Or is mein tamam research paper, matlab isko to uh, jitne bhi bolay, us mein kam hai. Every day, every second, hundreds of research paper, conference, discussion, especially on the one topic, earthquake prediction. Pahle bolte the, aajkal prediction has become so much, uh, you know. Uh, it is so much mixed up feelings as well as mixed up research results. Koi bhi aisa koi prediction oriented model or depictions, instrumentations, both inside the earth and through satellite navigation. So there are many such research projects by, uh, by our own country and globally, including NASA, Japan, European agency, or different, different satellite करके सैटेलाइट से आर्थ का मूवमेंट को देखते हुए एंड उसका डेटा लेते हुए वो किस तरह दिशा में क्या फोकस करने जा रहे हैं एंड उसमें व्हाट इज द करंट अपडेट पूरा बहुत हम इधर भी कोशिश करेंगे ओके सो आई विल स्पीक इन इंग्लिश बिकॉज़ वन ऑफ द पार्टिसिपेंट्स जस्ट सेड दैट टू स्पीक इन इंग्लिश सो वन थिंग इज आर्थक्वेक हैपेंस हियर Generally, aapko, main is mein jada, is mein, I am not going to focus. Uh, we generally report about the earthquake after it has shaken uh, in our country. Uh, we have not been able to make uh, reliably acceptable early warning message uh, because the stake is very high and work has to be done. There are lots of uh, instruments to be placed. Uh, in our Himalayan region, especially where earthquake happens. But whatever seismological uh, observation observatories uh, that we have placed, they are giving us information and we are able to, our country resources under Ministry of Earth Sciences, National Center for Seismology, uh, they, are, they are having a central resource station. Whenever earthquake happens, uh, they get the signal and with minimum possible time, uh, they are able to tell about the magnitude of earthquake and location of the earthquake, and they are being shared across uh, over the internet and everyone. But only thing is that it is not early warning. It is rather after it happens, then they give the details. So effort by countries like uh, Japan, Taiwan, Mexico, California, they have brought out of different perspectives about the catching earthquake early or rather earthquake not uh, whenever earth, wherever earthquake happen how early we can detect it here we will discuss a little bit so earthquake happens and then our building vibrates so that is why uh, that before these things happens or before these waves reach us that is what is early warning earthquake happens naturally we have not been able to get a, a reliable prediction models, but it definitely gives certain signal. In fact, today's main focus is on precursors. So there are 35, 40 plus precursors are there. And so 
which one is uh, now current update in the last few years uh, that which uh, Kostabji is going to highlight uh, that is about the, there are certain, because of the acoustics, uh, because the earthquake, the fault line when cracking or fault line happens or they, uh, there are certain way of definition uh, that acoustic waves, then they, they affect the ion and then what are the, uh, before, uh, the, the, how ionosphere uh, are, uh, are being, uh, you know, signal are being recorded in a ground-based station. So that is the part that will be taken up. Uh, so what I would say that when it is a question of buildings like this and the source of the earthquake, maybe uh, 50, 60, 70, 100, 200, 300 kilometer away, so there are there are certain uh, guidelines are there, Indian standard codes are there, and especially how to make earthquake resistant building, earthquake safe buildings, uh, all these things for the last 60, 70 years, our scientists and engineers and all together have been able to bring out uh, some kind of guideline and uh, so that if those guidelines are followed, those standards are followed, then earthquake generally 90% of the cases, 95% of the cases, uh, or rather, I would say, whatever earthquake that happened in the globe so far in the instrumental record since 1895 onward to this date, so we can say about 128, 25 years, instrumental records are there. Uh, but based on those records and based on the earthquake effect on the, on the buildings and the kind of guideline and standards that developed by the engineers and all together who investigate the types of damages, at least uh, whatever earthquake that happened so far, uh, especially in the land area, uh, we almost 95% of the cases, if those standards are followed, then we can at least give a surety that building will not collapse. But problem, occur somewhere else, we do not follow them correctly because expertise is not yet penetrated into the mass level of the construction. So that is why damages are happening. The recent one on 6th February in the Turkey Syria area, the buildings and it is already there, there are two, three plates are there and two earthquake happened in a gap of nine hours and the building damages and people that lost life in Syria part and also southern Turkey area uh, is a huge, more than 50,000, and still uh, reconstruction recovery part is going on even after eight, nine months. But thing is, the, some building were safe, some were not safe. So there are many teams of experts that investigating that, why they have caused failure, why they are not. But uh, now let me focus to uh, this part. 90-95% of the building can be made uh, safe if those standards and guidelines developed by the, uh, by the various country based on the donation, based on the methodology, based on the, uh, the vibration, based on the previous record, then we can safeguard our building. 90-95% of building, they will not collapse. Uh, only thing is that, that like whatever has happened in Nepal in 2015 or even in Sikkim, Nepal border in 2011, uh, that whatever has happened, it is be, be, because buildings uh, were not made uh, up to the seismic standards that which are available, even in our country since 1962, it is available. So at the same time, when earthquake cannot be predicted, but those earthquakes can be recorded using seismometer. So throughout the globe, there are certain measuring uh, well, seismometers are there and they are connected and those, whatever earthquakes are happening, I will come to the earthquake statistics also, especially instrumental record of earthquakes. So there are some uh, calculation has been made, how many earthquakes are happening uh, in, uh, if it is five magnitude, how many earthquakes are happening per year or per day. And those statistics I will come later. But what I would like to say in the very first slide is that uh, while we are not able to predict the earthquake, but we are we are having lots of experience for the centuries together 
centuries and millennium together. And those experience are being utilized for making a earthquake resistant construction. And in that way, and for the last like 1895 onward, seismic instrumentation records uh, is a huge, even Japan itself, more than 10,000 seismometer is there. In our country, broadband seismometers are there. And there are lots of development has taken place. So seismometer records, and based on that, re-experimenting re with those seismometer records onto a two-story to even seven-story, eight-story building is the kind of exercise, is the kind of experience, uh, in the, is the kind of you know methodology that adopted by engineers uh, to check that, okay, earthquake prediction could not be made, but we have got the seismic uh, instrumental record that recording of X, Y, Z direction, that uh, amplitude, acceleration, or displacement, uh, that, that can be transmitted through a shake table or through a dynamic centrifuge to the real building as can be shown over here. So then we can check that what, uh, whether the earthquake that which is experienced in a certain region, and those regions are also classified for the last 100 years across the globe, those are being shared. So in that case, we can check if we make a building like this and we can regenerate that earthquake, and then we can see that whether the building is resistant enough or not, or side by side also, some experiments are being done that one is earthquake resistant building, another is not. So we have shared many of this uh, experimental video uh, in, in many of our discourse through this webinar series and in many of the NIDM uh, say related uh, uh, say presentation related to earthquake and building construction. So uh, this is what I wanted to say. Earthquake cannot be predicted. Early warning part we are looking at and what are the signal that it gives uh, that part let us go into that. So why are we having so many earthquakes? The question is, has naturally occurring earthquake activity been increasing? The question is, does this mean a big one is going to hit? Uh, we have not had any earthquake in a long time. Does this mean that pressure is building up for a big one? In all essay comes a come braces of question. There are several questions can be asked, and there is no definitive uh, answer to that because it is so complex. This is what the, just I want to say. Uh, why are we having so many earthquakes? But recently, uh, while uh, you you know that uh, even many of the planets, even moon quakes are also there. Now we have gone to the moon, we landed our Chandrayaan 3, and now moon quakes are also being said. So whenever such kind of celestial bodies like Earth, Earth is there, because once upon a time they have been very hot, and they, after being Big Bang, they hot, they started free flying pellets, then star like sun uh, was also there at the same time then because sun is the bigger in our planetary system here solar system we call it so uh, because of the gravitation gravitation it has formed it it has formed own network of uh, eight nine uh, satellite uh, this earth and then we are moving and we are moving at a speed of several thousand kilometer per second uh, within a galaxy of so there are lots of information as there uh, information are being uh, shared uh, but uh, so wherever planet when it is a hot thing is there it became cool over the time because more than four billion years uh, the earth uh, has been cooling down but inside the earth core there are uh, some uh, some core item are there which are very hot and sometime uh, they come out uh, not from the core but in the thrust near the crust by a volcanic eruptions and without volcanic eruption uh, that they cannot I mean rather this kind of life could not be generated because volcanic eruption is the reason behind that change uh, forming of the weather ocean and other things so we are not again going to that direction uh, but uh, whether earthquake activity has been increasing or not is bishame instrumental record i am going to show 
since 1890, uh, 1895 onward, and till date that what are the average earthquake that we are getting, instrumental record, as I said. So, a big earthquake is coming or not, for that again, lots of instrumentation, and I'll show some of the instrumentation uh, being made in our country and in other country where earthquakes are not uh, that much, like in uh, northern, uh, say, uh, in, in the Netherlands or not Netherlands, in the Norway and other Greenland area, uh, that how they are able to uh, take the earthquake signals and using fuzzy logic and and using various other tools and technique, um, they are able to chase the when is the next earthquake are happening. So there are lots of publication are there on the basis of the research and findings, and then uh, they are uh, decorating uh, many of our you know scientific uh, say archives. But the most important thing: can animal predict earthquake? Uh, because uh, this is the most, I think, uh, very common and every time we know that dogs or animals, they bark. Uh, there are many such, so this is also one of the precursors that can be listed among the 35 plus precursors that uh, we, as I have said in the beginning. So whether animal can do or not, we are not saying, yes, they can, they have got some perceptory organ. A perceptory criteria, which through machine we are trying to uh, get them because we do not understand their mind, but how they behave and respond. So there are several such live laboratories are there. What are the signal they take? And, and there are many school of research group are there to check about the animal behavior by creating an artificially uh, vibration, artificial earthquake vibration, and then how they behave. But the point is that uh, there is, yes, they, they can sense it. And that is why, you know, in many of the cases in security, security cases, we are still using sniffer dog, despite so much of development in the sense, in the sensors or instrument, we are still depending on how meticulously a sniffer dog can identify uh, something that whatever uh, we are using in the airport or many of the security system. So uh, how well our our sensors are able to emulate the kind of uh, detection and experience that an animal like dog is having. So we have to make a, we are always uh, believing in that, but trying to, uh, recreate that using the knowledge base of the dog, the way that it sniff or the way that they bark and creating an artificial uh, vibration like system. And then when we make artificial vibration, it means that at certain, their sensory organ, uh, when they bark, so there is certain frequency and so which may be matching with that. And in fact, if we look at that uh, in modern day, uh, harmless rather we say that uh, many of our uh, you know mosquito repeller uh, they based on the same thing uh, mosquito repeller and other thing so we have brought in fact uh, society has brought many such innovations in this area and still a lot of work is going on so whether animals can have some specific sense of uh, you know response uh, while earthquake type of things are happening, but distinguishing that and then taking decision on that is still uh, is, a, is a question, multi-million dollar question to look into. But we are not neglecting it. We are also seeing that uh, we have got now many kind of many kind of IoT or many kind of you know LoRa based sensors are there. So taking. Now, you know, whenever we visit, uh, whenever we go to certain area, especially in the forest area, animals are there, they are geotagged and their signals and everything are uh, continuously recorded. So many research body, especially the forest research institutes, they do on the live animal where they go, where they are going, what kind of response they are doing. So there are enormous such observation data exercise are going on. And so, what really earthquake is doing 
it is that happening over here, the way they're traveling, it is becoming bigger and bigger and the same building, but placed at different location, which is saying that water saturated sand and mud. Here it is smaller one. Then it is becoming poorly consolidated. It is becoming bigger one. Here nothing has happened where it is on the bedrock. But here it is almost shaken like anything in this case. So under such a condition, same building, you see, uh, same building with same earthquake, but at different type of soil or rock below, same earthquake is uh, affecting or affecting the building, same building, same three, four story building as it can be said. Uh, so what is the kind of rock type? What is the, what, uh, whether it is nearby the, uh, say water body or area or whether it is nearby the river valley or any area, depending on that, uh, the relative magnitude and frequency uh, from the seismogram one, corresponding to two and then three, you see that they have a different thing. So this is where uh, that uh, geologists, seismologists, geotechnology, geomorphology, and, and then building construction experts. And there are, uh, so we deal with uh, such things very carefully while making a new constructions or how many story that to be made, all these things is a subject area, which is very much well studied and described uh, in the literature as well as in publications uh, that and standards and guidelines that which are being adopted world, uh, worldwide wherever earthquakes are happening, depending on this. So, uh, but the first thing I want to say that this I often show, uh, this is a photograph that uh, taken of a train because what is earthquake early warning? Okay, this is complex. This is people have developed some standard course guideline. And here, whether they can predict or not. But finally, in the name of earthquake early warning, uh, uh, here, what we want to see that what is the, if we are able to give early warning, what are the major, uh, say, contribution to help the community that we can do? The one of that is, of course, we can save ourselves if we get the information. And at the same time, we can save many of this operation. Uh, like here, uh, 23rd October 2004, an earthquake happened in Niigata, Japan. And they have already earthquake early warning system. And even they have dedicated early warning system along the railway line uh, here. So when they detect the same earthquake, they not only detect within one to two seconds. And for that, what will be the network of seismometer within 15 to 20 kilometer grid point, they have to put it. Then only they can be, it is possible to catch the earthquake after it happens within one to two seconds. And then they can also, when it is detected and location is detected, then they can apply automatic brake to uh, many of the, like here, it is a bullet train. So in the bullet train where people are there, so it can be stopped uh, by applying automatic brake. So many of these kind of operations are done remotely. And you know, the operations that we have seen in Chandrayaan 3, it is similarly in the same way uh, that some operation can be done remotely through wireless. Uh, we can give this signal and it will auto. When we go to the shopping mall, uh, uh, no sliding door, they open. So there are some RFID systems are there. Uh, so in that case, uh, these are as easy for the last 50 years, we know all these operations. So uh, applying that early warning uh, message to save a train while it is running at a very high speed and bringing it down and then saving the train from a complete collapse or failure or devastation to a standstill in a minimum possible time before S wave, uh, which I'll show some of the animations of the S wave and relay wave or uh, those things I'll show a little bit. So uh, the, ultimately the system is the huku, like this, this is the kind, kind of things that uh, they have done uh, because when uh, 11th March uh, that tsunami earthquake has happened uh, in 2011, 11th March, uh, then what 
because they are having this is already 2004 23rd october same system is still under operation of course it will remain under operation so just uh, see that uh, bullet train immediately stopped by primary wave sensors located along the coastline in 2011-11 march no derailment no fatalities no injuries so uh, the today's topic you see taking example from the japan taking example from the japan on 23rd october 2004 that how uh, they have been able to locate the train stop the train before this red wave which is being shown where s wave reaches to the train whenever it is running so before this is the killer wave this is the s wave shear wave this body wave first they detect and based on that they calculate and then what they do they make the power of automatic electric power transformer transformer off and accordingly they save the train and this is the kind of statistics there 27 shinkansen were in service between tokyo and shinomori in the more further north two shinkansens were running at a maximum speed of 270 km per hour near sendai and t wave detected electricity immediately cut off 9 to 12 seconds before the s wave 9 to 12 seconds before s wave arrives at the safe spot emergency brake maximum shear wave reached 70 seconds after the first detection shinkansen were already slowed down below 100 km per hour so nothing such thing no secondary disaster has happened even though we all know now that the it has uh, the water has entered into the uh, that uh, nuclear power and then it has exploded and a lot of radiation issues came up at that time so finally uh, this is that basics of that this is japan meteorological agency p wave this is the wave that we detect by seismometer over here before and and this is the s wave shear wave before this one uh, reach uh, then this when this is detected and then several such because when uh, by this time this uh, blue colored uh, p wave uh, it, it has reached already this area so there needs a close network of seismometer like these are all seismometer in fact each seismometer in our country costing uh, 5 to 10 lakh even sometimes 15 lakh and then they have to be installed in a place in a bedrock with certain specifications are there and then what happens that why uh, how, uh, this wave was here the red wave and by the time p wave has gone and this one will be coming with certain time then this one this p wave is detected by each of this seismometer over here but each of this seismometer has detected before this s wave arrives in a spot then there is a computer system is there uh, say some software is there and and it will detect from each of the seismometer p waves are detected minimum three such uh, signal that it has to receive and fourth one gives us uh, gives that uh, the software to decide about the depth and of course magnitude and location and magnitude everything decided so when so many before s wave arrives when all the seismometer which are in close network they detect the p waves then by that time with fast computing they are able to say that how much more time it will take to reach the shear wave to a particular train or a building or whatever uh, nuclear power station so this is the basic principle of that and of course uh, then these are now these days uh, for the last so many years now they can be transmitted to our mobile phone and mobile phone has got also now some kind of broadcast device for the last 14 years even all iphone and everyone is having uh, some broadcasting device is there eu eew earthquake early warning uh, earthquake early warning eeu it has been made mandatory to make all the telephone that made across the globe smartphone and uh, that they have to have this service uh, to be pre-installed in the mobile and it is already there uh, you can check also so finally bring it uh, here and but the another level of uh, thing is where it is our mobiles are having gps 
So uh, we need not to uh, worry about that, uh, whether it will reach to me or not, but when GPS enable mobile phones, smartphones are there. So uh, such kind of early warning is given to all mobile phone uh, that then they will come to know, which I'll show a little later, that how each and every individual who are carrying with smartphone, uh, they get this information. But in our country, as I said, we have not been able to create such a network or such a worldly warning system because each of this uh, seismic uh, station that which is to be placed minimum as per Japanese system or whatever new system is there, 20 kilometer center to center, each one has to be placed at 20 kilometers so that in 20 kilometer, if earthquake happens, suppose uh, these are the earthquake happens somewhere here at the center. So from here to if, if this is 20 kilometer, this is 20 kilometer. So at the speed of say five kilometer per second, the P wave generally, and this travels at a speed of three kilometer per second. This we know very much uh, categorically we know. So it may take hardly one second or 1.5 to two seconds to reach to one of the station or in all the four stations. By that time, the computer calculates that an earthquake has happened. So within one to two seconds of time, it is able to locate the position of the earthquake because then in and around that earthquake happening, wherever earthquake, look, earthquake positions we know and close seismic network will help us within one to two seconds to detect the location and magnitude of the earthquake. So that part when it is there and then that information, like Nepal is about 800 kilometer away from Delhi. So with close seismic network in and around Nepal, Himalaya and all those area. So in 800 kilometer away Delhi, uh, so at the speed of say three second, three kilometer per second, which means every 100 kilometer earthquake will take around 33 seconds. So when it takes 33 seconds to travel 100 kilometer, so you can say when earthquake in Kathmandu, when an earthquake happened over there with the closed seismic network over there, which is not yet in place, if we are able to catch the earthquake there itself within two seconds, then how many in, uh, then when it has traveled say 100 kilometer, 33 seconds it will take, so in 800 kilometer means it is more than 260 seconds. So in that case, earthquake that which has happened in and around Kathmandu can be transmitted at a speed of light to Delhi or throughout the world or can be put up in our mobile phone. So wherever we are, irrespective of our location, because this will be disseminated to everyone. So in that case, we get in our mobile phone we want to get certain information in our mobile phone. Where earthquake happened? What is the intensity that which I am going to face at my location? So uh, with, with this kind of information are uh, now possible, but we shall be uh, arriving to that kind of solution only when we'll have a close network of the seismometer, but we need thousands of such thousands because Japan is a country, they have made more than 10,000 seismometer Imagine uh, that 300 kilometer by uh, 2,400 kilometer. 300 kilometer is the width of our Himalaya, and 2,400 kilometer is the uh, east to west. So, in uh, 300 into 2,400, and and then in each uh, say 20 means uh, 400 square kilometer. Uh, in 20 kilometer means 20 kilometer by 20 kilometer. Uh, if we put each one there, how many thousands of uh, seismic stations are required? And not only that station, we can place it. We have placed more than 157 or 60, and another five, 600 with World Bank funding are going to be installed very soon. But even this will not be enough. So in that case, we have to find the uh, interface between a hybrid mode. Let there should be some of these stations and some can be used uh, using the instrument that which is being devised by Kostovji and his team, which will be will be taking uh, will be discussing just at the end of uh, this session. Uh, then 
so a hybrid or a coordination and a taking minimum number of uh, seismometer because it is very costly putting some other devices and mobile phone all together even these days uh, meta means facebook also collects this information intensity information in fact usgs has been collecting this mobile based uh, say damage survey and in, uh, information within mobile phone within few minutes of time that is why they are able to give the shake map uh, immediately within 5 to 10 minutes in the uh, in the in, uh, in the internet so uh, a combination of this thing can help us not only reduce the cost but also reliability and swift dissemination of the earthquake early warning related information which kostabji in the beginning of his today's introduction he was uh, telling about bill but more elaborate thing will come up uh, then so let me see what is the difference between earthquake early warning earthquake forecast earthquake probabilities and earthquake prediction so it is all uh, there are all there are many faqs are there uh, you can search into the net i have directly taken from there early warning is a notification that is issued after an earthquake starts and probabilities and forecasts are just like that in, in case of weather forecast that we do while predictions are more like statements when where and how large this part is because prediction part uh, which is not yet possible for earthquake you know precisely but uh, early warning part uh, because it is a huge investment like japan did california some portion they did now we have to take a choose between that more 500 600 station that which ministry of through ministry of earth science and cs is going to establish and even in uttarakhand uh, several such uh, things uh, uh, this earthquake early warning means uh, is there in the iit Roorkee and in the half part of the uttarakhand they have installed these seismometers and but uh, public warning not yet possible because earthquake is not happening only in the geographical boundary of the Uttarakhand. It has to be taken all around. And generally, an earthquake of magnitude 6 and above, 6 to 8 rather we can say, which are damaging in our part of the life, their damage, their damage pattern or their damageability are generally contained within uh, 250 to 300 kilometer. So, but it is again region to region, it different. Many earthquake has happened. They have defied this assumption or idealization. Sometime earthquake happens, they are damaged. Even if it is more than six, they are limited within 100 kilometer, depending on the, again, geology and, and ground conditions and whether it is proximity to a river or any other areas or not. But we will not go. So, there are again some kind of uh, like in Uttarakhand, multi parametric geophysical observatories are there. So, in the name of precursors, uh, how they are, what are the things that they are measuring? So, radon monitoring they are doing, superconducting gavimeter uh, they have used, resistivity measurement they are doing, and then uh, accelerograph and broadband stations and accelerograph, it is all multi parameter, all together is very costly. And then GPS and strain meter are also being recorded magnetic observations and then electromagnetic emission in uh, ultra uh, ulf ultra uh, what is that frequency low frequency band and then groundwater monitoring also they are doing and also there are certain research paper comes out from the national geophysical research institute so multiparity geo and then how uh, they uh, how they install all these which are being shown over here and then how they monitor it and what are the uh, what are the data comes and how they plot it in our indian area but uh, so only thing is that I want to go again uh, to that. What are the Indian effort is going on? And then uh, red and emission, water level variation, atmospheric temperature variation, very high uh, frequency signal, uh, thermal long wave radiation, and then uh, GPS, uh, then animal behavior, and total. Uh, what is this TEC count total? What's the subject? 
this is what you are going to like a total elect this are the total electron counts actually total electron uh, counts yeah so these are all these are now becoming a very 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 now even government of india uh, even many of our indian scientists also have taken a very serious note about these ones which were i know that few decades back or even couple of years back they used to be neglected because it is not a science or anti science or something like that but now it has come a great domain in the scientific perspective of taking into the atmosphere ionosphere and their effect onto onto the earthquake predictions and early warning yeah it is actually uh, said that uh, the positive holes which are created in between the charged uh, uh, electron systems so uh -huh. that is uh, that is happening due to the stress in the rock which is there uh, during this event is happening so that okay. actually comes up as a precursor so please continue okay 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 and then uh, there is uh, there is one cosmic uh, ionospheric perturbation cip that uh, how it is connected and then acoustic waves in the atmosphere uh, and the, the waves propagate upward, reach the ionosphere, causing disturbances in the numbers of electrons along the line of sites connecting ground, uh, connecting the global national uh, global navigation satellite system. And then this part is also being really correlated. So, Kostabji, can you uh, just elaborate on this area? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, actually, uh, what happens, uh, I'll just give you a uh, brief of that like uh, there are physical uh, stress is happening uh, the underlying process is the physical stress in the rocks and uh, there are two three different type of uh, uh, energy which is uh, being uh, changed very rapidly during that time and uh, let's say there is a highly mobile electronic uh, charge carrier system in the rocks and mm -hmm. this electron suddenly there is a positive hole noted in that stressed rock. So okay. uh, if 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 we if we if we see the cause of this, uh, that that can be a positive uh, potential surface potential change. It can have a field ionization of the air molecules, or it can also be a corona discharge. So okay. these are the things which can uh, uh, get into action very fast uh, mm -hmm. uh, before any rock movements or any surface movement happens. So huh. this massive uh, air ionization uh, before the earthquake or such a major uh, movement in the earth, uh, mm -hmm. they actually uh, increase the electrical conductivity in the air column and causes ionospheric uh, pre-disturbations. So okay. this... Uh, uh, this disturbation disturb uh, condition is actually uh, sometimes called a earthquake light. Uh, ah, you know, uh, yeah. uh, there, there, there is a phenomena called earthquake light. Before uh, any earthquake happens, that area uh, or that zone is uh, uh, very, uh, you know, uh, it is lightened up, you can say, because the charge of that uh, electron spare out there. Uh, mm very fastly changes and just like a uh, lighting happens, uh, we see a lot of earth earthquake lights happening in that way. So, yeah, uh, yeah. so that, that is what a uh, brief of this uh, uh, disturbances we can see and can be taken as a, as a precursor. Okay, it is all due to the uh, crustal movements and which yes, uh, uh, makes uh, this acoustic waves. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, great. So nowadays, like as you mentioned on the last slide, uh, GNSS, the satellite, uh, yeah, this yeah. satellite can uh, actually monitor this type of uh, systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they have uh, systems to correlate with the uh, uh, mm -hmm. existing uh, scenario, what it is at that ground level, and then compare and give a very fast uh, uh, Okay. detection or maybe uh, they can give some signal for the alert alerting the people around there yes, okay sir. okay oh yeah okay. you take it up sir mm -hmm. so uh, just following up i think uh, also uh, has uh, explained that part 
And the scientific rationale for, uh, rationale for multidisciplinary analysis is founded on the concept of lithosphere, atmosphere, ionosphere, coupling. This is, this is what that earthquake light also is one of the uh, that uh, event that we may see. And in fact, uh, this is what I think GNSS and then uh, like earthquake hypocenter is here. Inland earthquake is happening and then these waves are going there and then it is going to satellite and then of course GNSS. And uh, then uh, they are able to ocean bottom like in the ocean also we have dart. And then at, it is going to atmosphere like in ionosphere is here. So this is lithosphere. So conceptual diagram of integrated satellite and terrestrial framework for multi-parameter observation of pre-earthquake signals in Japan. This is, uh, in fact, uh, this kind of observation uh, are continuously going on. And uh, I'm not sure about uh, in our country, uh, but this is based on a paper published in 2018. So this is also a very recent one. And so uh, then it is able to see that electromagnetic observation, redden, weather, uh, then VLF, VHF, very high frequency radio frequencies and ocean bottom electromagnetic sensors. Satellite components include, includes uh, total electron count, TEC, and uh, GPS and synthetic aperture radar, SAR, and SWARM, microwave and thermal infrared satellites so this is all uh, being installed, especially in case of Japan and continuously they are observing. And then finally, uh, that radon and weather observations, everything going on together with the use of satellite. satellite. So uh, now, uh, so just only th this is uh, to say earthquake precursors domain area consist of the earthquake process and observe physical signals that precede them as the point word precursor. And it also explores the relationship between pre-earthquake activity and characteristics of the subsequent seismic events. And it also encompasses physical, atmospheric, geochemical, and historical characteristics of the pre-earthquakes. So which is very, very, you know, fundamental things and of course, Correlating them is the is a is a very very complex things, and it illustrates the thermal infrared seismo ionospheric and other satellite and ground based pre earthquake anomalies, and also uh, applies this multidisciplinary data to earthquake forecasting and prediction. So precursor, uh, you see that what are the uh, what are the different areas, including even geochemical, atmospheric, physical, like crustal movements are happening. And then thermal, infrared, seismo, ionospheric, and other satellite, uh, ground-based pre-earthquake anomalies, all are being combined together so that this is a multidisciplinary data collections and dissemination and decision making. So, uh, research are going on, work is going on continuously. So what is the aim is to improve our understanding of the lead up to earthquakes at global scale by observing possible lithosphere atmospheric coupling. So there are many other countries like European uh, detection of electromagnetic uh, emission transmitted from earthquake region, Demeter, satellite, uh, was the first to systematically study electromagnetic signal in relation to earthquake and volcanoes. And the Chinese uh, Seismo Electromagnetic Satellite, CSES, was launched, dedicated to monitoring electromagnetic fields and particles. So finally, what we like to see that on our mobile phone, we would like to see Real-time tracking of the earthquake, seismic wave from earthquake, number one, real-time tracking. Real-time tracking of the fault ruptures, like here, is a fault rupture, uh, number two. Current location marked by GPS, here, number three, I'm standing over here, earthquake has ha happened here, fault movement, fault movement has occurred over here in this line, 
seconds remaining before number 4 is 28 seconds are remaining to to reach this arrow from here to here from here to here it needs uh, it it's showing that 28 seconds are remaining to reach this earthquake uh, this red color is a s wave to reach to the space uh, to this uh, location where i am standing and then expected intensity of quake this number 5 is intensity 6 which we understand intensity is a thing that which we easily understand that how much shaking that you are going to affect and accordingly you see that there are some color diagrams are there which i'll show in detail and then intensity scale uh, it is showing that number 7 is the intensity scale uh, this is what is being shown over here and estimated magnitude of the quake 7.8 magnitude earthquake is the number 6 that happened over here so what we expect in our earthquake early warning system is that we have to have close seismic network or even some of the devices which kostobji is going to discuss and uh, which can detect this signal ionospheric uh, this tc signal as we have seen uh, just in the before few slides and then finally we would like to bring uh, wherever we are like i am with my uh, mobile phone or whatever uh, broadcasting system is also there that doesn't need electric uh, uh, this internet or anything broadcasting things comes through uh, some frequency in the radio wave frequency uh, so that the this screen comes along with the photograph through a 3g 4g mobile or 5g system Uh, but as far as sms is concerned even 2g phone is enough or even uh, not only phone or some of the detection through radio devices also we can collect this system so there are elaborate uh, exercise as well as uh, co correlations are there to reach from the source of earthquake that which is here immediately that it happens and getting it to the person or people or even in train line or stopping something this is what that uh, people expect in our country or even in all those areas where such kind of system not yet being developed so this is what happens in case of earthquake just only to show and these are the list of the earthquake which are available in the net uh, and then uh, signs of earthquake the tectonics wave mechanics which we understand from the measurements testing mapping and then our expertise where our expertise is lessons of the past uh, great earthquakes and uniqueness in india what are the unique earthquake that happening then for the mitigation part we have codes guideline education research experimentation capacity to cope up with present built environment rules bylaws act and enforcement mechanism a lot of things are there so uh, just only and where earthquake happens where do earthquake occur and how often how often for part i am showing so this is where is india so this is already these are the uh, tectonic plate and they are uh, where they are moving and they are uh, you know convergent boundary then divergent boundary transform so there are Uh, there are lots of decoration of these features are being made on the global uh, seismic map or global uh, the earth globe and entire globe you see they are having like this one uh, this one is specific plate this is called ring of fire this is most of the earthquake almost 80% of the earthquake happens in this zone only and this is where you see the japan japan is uh, is a country Uh, you see that it is in the three plate boundaries are mixed in the japan so here is the japan but still they make 70 80 story building and they are still serving they dance with the earthquake and they have monitor system they have made seismic device system and you have seen just before that uh, during 2011 uh, that tsunami event earthquake that how many shinkansen shinkansen means bullet train that they have stopped there is no uh, and how they have disseminated and how they have uh, you know safeguard all those uh, train by uh, displaying uh, their capacity as well as information that because of course the earthquake happened in 200 km offshore 
so it gave them more time uh, to to give all this signal to all the vulnerable like train or nuclear power dam and all those authorities together through uh, various ways of communication and also their television and other radio network are all correlated with that whenever such kind of things happen there are specific uh, signal and announcement will be there and those announcements are fixed they do not change and they always display that yes uh, earthquake has happened and tsunami may arrive more damaging earthquake are happening because there are some specific announcement style is there and and some with some kind of signals and some kind of sound they disseminate it so that people can easily uh, uh, get to know that oh yes uh, earthquake has happened um, and because japan is surrounded by uh, ocean uh, water so tsunami always tsunami is a japanese word that we know and side by side this is only a physically put up some red dots but what with the with the 70 plus thousands of seismometer across the globe uh, in india we have 200 around 200 or even some less but more we are going to install so uh, how we are going to how we are going to make it and of course uh, what is the current uh, what is that uh, jumbo seismic monitor like this is that uh, taken uh, 2022 5th february like india and all this place what are the earthquakes one is physically put up the dot after earthquake record is there so we put them physically in this map another thing is a live jumbo monitor is there so whatever earthquake is happening even just now color coding are given over here these are the color coding today means red color today means red color today here this red color means it is on February 5th, uh, GMT, Greenwich uh, Mean Time, uh, which means that it is uh, five hours before. I mean, in our country, it is February uh, 5th, means February, uh, it is about 12.30 uh, or something like that. And then uh, 2022, what is today? Today is December 1, just before the lecture starts, I have taken it. What is today? Uh, today is this, uh, this is India. So Friday, today is Friday, today is December 1. Uh, so if you can, you can add this uh, five, uh, so here it is nine. So it is around 3.30, uh, something like that. So uh, you can see on, uh, so this is the position. These are all being recorded online and then we come to know then finally when an earthquake occurs like in the case of sikkim what usgs have been giving to us which we are not yet able to update our map in this manner like 2011 18 september earthquake in sikkim nepal border here somewhere uh, here at this place so how uh, this shake map has been developed and it is given and how this respond as i say so many people has responded so there are some specific questions are given immediately at the place of earthquake because earthquakes are detected within few seconds to few minutes then immediately uh, there are certain team with basic questions what is the intensity you felt so there are some basic questions are there so people respond through through their mobile phone or internet or anything accordingly they those responses are being updated into the map, local map, like they have done it for us and for the showing that entire India, Nepal, and all this area. And then they have given us some color coding also. And this color coding is matching with this one also. You see uh, how signs of information through various people and feedback given by various people. Then how they are being interpreted and they are being shown and immediately placed within five to ten minutes in a in an internet so that administration and everyone uh, they are able to know about uh, such kind of you see uh, here it is processed time is also there earthquake happened on 18 september and by 20th september 
they are able to display this graph. So within a day or two, so you see that once the what is the precursors and everything which Osobji uh, and Shekhatji has been trying. Uh, if we are, if when their values are also interpreted in this way, along with the national uh, seismometer broadband that being placed, and we see that how we can collate them, then we at least we will be more realistic in disseminating this information uh, to the to the public, everyone here in the form of a map which is being shown here. In fact, the reason behind having this uh, webinar today itself is that whatever existing seismic network is there, we are not in a position to bring them so fast. Uh, uh, because you, here you see uh, American seismic network, they have been able to, whereas they have not taken any data from our, our uh, data. Our database are more than 200s are there. In fact, in the Northeast, there are more than maybe 50, because these are the places where earthquakes are happening. Even tele-seismic network are also there. But we have not been able to collate the information of them quickly enough so that they can be made or displayed in this manner. But at the same time, uh, while such formats are available, we also, because it is a public living in this area, only they are responding. So we can also take up quickly this exercise also in our own level and with more dense seismic network. Uh, then we'll be able to give more specific information uh, to the public as soon as possible. And with the, with the color coding and everything, we know that our building, whatever we are considered, we are making our building following the code, they should be able to, as I said in the beginning, 90%, uh, 90, 95% of the building, if we follow the building code, we can safeguard the building from total collapse. So the main idea is that how quickly we can reach uh, to the public with the available scientific information, with endorsing those findings, and then getting uh, those findings realistically and quickly we can disseminate, disseminate and show. And then accordingly that seeing this color code and the kind of, this is, a, this is the information given by the public, this color and everything. But then we can have administration will have a uh, strategy to deploy. They don't have to, they, they have to deploy here. Uh, it is only three or two or three intensity. Here it is heavier, here it is lower. So you see lots of, you know, based on this feedback it's in Calcutta and this area more shaking is there. Even in this part more shaking is there. So from Calcutta to this place, it is about 600 kilometer. Then if response team or our, because in Gohati, we are having uh, uh, a team of our NDRF and in Calcutta also. So Calcutta team can see that based on this public feedback, they can see that what are the damage. Along with the experts, we can see that whether damage has happened or not, because ultimately this response are given by the public. They are not, that much familiar, but we can do some kind of mock drill and exercise that what kind of information they should give. So then it becomes the role of an IDM and uh, other state and district level uh, say administration to get familiarity with giving what kind of response to be given. Ultimately, this response will be playing a vital role in making them use in the form of the map. So it will be a public and then scientist instrument or administration all together uh, that immediately after the earthquake that what are the basic information required and what are the action plan to be made and where we have to deploy uh, say response team or relief team and other things so so many things have become so relevant so uh, anyway uh, like this kind of earthquake happens now uh, I'll show later also, you see, in a, in, this is in Nepal, very famous area. This is broken completely due to the 2015 earthquake. Uh, but uh, here also, uh, now seeing such kind of activity, uh, with so many birds are there, they are flying, they are playing, but who knows that in what way that we can 
have a precursor kind of signal processing or taking signal from this that they can create an earthquake of this at this point and then they create uh, then they can be disseminated but there is like in the beginning that whether animal or birds or even snakes or frogs they behave very differently by seeing their activity uh, then what kind of database that we have to take then in that case uh, if we take this kind of exercise in fact in nepal some research group they are doing seeing the activity of the animals or even birds together even snakes and throughout the globe it is a global uh, uh, some uh, work and funding is going on uh, just to check that whether this can be uh, construed to a precursor uh, but uh, it is not so easy how many uh, like average earthquakes per year how many are happening it is some data as i said from 1990 to 1999 uh, magnitude 8 to 9.9 .9, because maximum is 9.9 .9. we have experienced 9.5 beyond 10 is not possible because it is infinite possible because in the earth uh, it cannot in order to create a magnitude more than 10 is not uh, possible because it cannot create such a big fault based on the fault mapping that uh, the globally that we know of so far so, but maximum recorded is 9.5 in the chile uh, so then you can see how many earthquake uh, eight to eight and above has happened in these nine years see but if we make total five out of ten years so it is half chance 50 percent chance that one earthquake eight and above will be happening but when you see 8 to 9.9 .9 from 2000 to 2008 you see 1 plus 4 5 then 7 8 10 11 12 13 so in this 10 years in this 10 years 13 earthquake has happened so we can say average it is coming in one year at least one and this three if we if we uh, back to here and add here uh, 5 plus 3 8 here is 5 6 plus 3 9 so 19 earthquakes uh, 19 earthquake uh, earthquake has happened in 20 years of gap so we can say yearly average is one which is written over here so and you know eight and above magnitude earthquake happened in our country in the last uh, two century it is uh, four uh, in fact, two in the northeast part, one in uh, Kangra area, and then one in Nepal, uh, this uh, Nepal Bihar border. So, four earthquake in that part that has happened, especially. But so, yearly average uh, is, of course, uh, it doesn't fit over there. But when we take the globally scenario, as I have mentioned over here, global scenario over here, this portion. If we see that this portion, all the big earthquakes are happening here because, you know, 80% of all earthquakes occurs in this area. Most of this result from the convergent margin boundary. That is a, this is a very dangerous zone. So, uh, this is one part. And whenever we say six are damaging earthquake for us, so every year 158, 120 something are happening. So, six to nine six to nine earthquake average is yearly average is 134 so if yearly average is 134 so above six earthquake 134 earthquakes are happening 365 days which means fairly three earthquakes are happening every year above six magnitude and 17 means here seven and above like in nepal it has happened in Turkey, it has happened. If we add those things, because this data is up to uh, up to 1999 only, so we can say that here uh, about yearly seven and above earthquake are happening 17, which means every month on an on an average that every month about 1.5 earthquakes are happening. So these are all instrumental records of the earthquake. 
And of course, there are many such information are there, which are the bigger, biggest earthquake, deadliest earthquake, there are many things are there. And then uh, a global analysis of the relationship between urbanization and fatalities in earthquake prone areas. So if we see that urbanization, of course, this data is very old, very old in 2015, but it gives us a trend. And then Haiti, you see more than 210,000 people in Afghanistan, India, China, Iran, 2003, 26 December earthquake, it has killed and leveled many of the old monuments over there. So the more urbanization is going on, more fatality. Fatality or deaths here indicates the size of, say, uh, size here in 80,000 and above or 40,000, something like that. So in USA, Japan, you see fatality is not that high, but there are some exceptions uh, are also there in, in uh, Recently, like tsunami in 2011 has killed 20,000, but that is uh, much smaller compared to that we had in uh, during tsunami or even uh, 2008 earthquake. So there are many such records are there. I'm not going into that detail. And also, like Hiroshima atomic bomb is around 6 magnitude, 6.1 magnitude earthquake. So there are many comparisons and how earthquake uh, creates those energies. There are a lot of information are available. And how earthquake early warning basics work over here. Of course, sensors are there, epicenter earthquake is there, S wave will come, P wave will be detected. This will be sense, this will be generated over here. From here it will go here, from here it will go here. So based on that, it will a large center is there, all the software is there automatic. Then this will generate the alert warning and everything uh, into the area, whether it is train or whether people are living over there or not. And then normal long-term human response to earthquake, like there is one paper, zero to one minute major earthquake, one minute to one week aftershocks, and then one week to one month time in diminishing after aftershock. And then of course, one year to 10 years are diminishing interest. So if you see that one to 10 years of diminishing interest, and <laughs> I, I have not described these things, especially uh, one slide that I have shown uh, by one Japanese uh, uh, here. Natural disaster will hit us by the time people have forgotten about it. In fact, deliberately I did not, it is about, about the great Kanto earthquake after that, more than one lakh, uh, 40,000 Japanese uh, died in that case. Even many of them died because of the fire uh, due to the earthquake at that time. So natural disaster will hit us by the time people have forgotten it. So I just thought that let me connect this one uh, to you, uh, this, this observation, diminishing interest. So uh, 10 years to next earthquake, reluctance to meet the cost of seismic provisions etc. increase in non-compliance with regulation. Zero to one minute we become panic. Uh, one minute to one week we are concerned about the aftershock, rescue, survival or other thing. One week to one month diminishing after aftershock will be there. So short term repairs that we take care. Allocation of blame to builders, designers, officials, etc. So there are lots of the charts and lots of things that how we responded. And ultimately P wave S wave and then relay wave, this surface wave, and then love wave, love wave. These are all in the name of scientists. Uh, this is given. Uh, so this is also in the name of uh, scientists that it has given. So you see that very nature of the same wave, how it shakes our ground. Uh, the, the most uh, dangerous is the relay wave. Uh, it, it, is not, it is now we want to just give you the, some of the available animation that how each of these waves uh, look like. Here you see that uh, blue spot you can see. So in case of railway, uh, you see that uh, how the blue spot is moving, both this way, this way, this way, this way. So this is very dangerous. Shear wave, you see each of the uh, black spot here trying to rub around this like this, like this. And P wave is just, it is like a sound wave it is going. 
compression, compression, rearfection, compression, expansion, compression, expansion, rearfection, you can say. And you see that this is not that much dangerous. This is not that much dangerous. This is dangerous, but when it comes to the wave that which uh, the earthquake that happens maybe 10 kilometer, 15 kilometer, 20 kilometer below, then it, it reaches to the ground. The very first photograph that I have shown during today's presentation, then when it comes to the surface, then uh, it generates this dangerous wave in the surface. And you think of the blue spot, that the way that it is dancing, think about the same effect onto our building that how it have to happen. And this is very, very complex. And we cannot measure just before, the, during this presentation, I have mentioned several times and showed you seismometer. Seismometer can only record this wave in three directions, X direction, Y direction, Z or Z direction. They are all orthogonally, uh, you know, uh, orthogonally, they are all connected to each other. So it is all independent. This is independent. This is independent. But these are all that how they are manifested into the ground. When it is manifested into the ground, and then based on that, the seeing the dancing nature of the blue spot, blue ball or spot that you are seeing, you see that then what kind of design challenge, what are the building challenge, building that get affected due to the relay wave or love wave. Love wave is just like, like this, like this. So more elaborate thing is here, what happens into the ground, ground facilities or even a road or even rail or even a bridge that what kind of effect that it causes up and down side by side side by side motion is you see this is a love wave side by side up and down something like this is shear wave something like that it has happened and see the wave pattern over here how it is coming and how this is the direction of the wave and what happens to our building or as it is being shown over here and you see that p wave and look at this black spot what has happened to this just it only compress over here but it doesn't affect much but when it is as wave is there it is something like that this kind of effect and see that the uh, the, the vibration that or the kind of movement that the black spot is experiencing see. so and then the relay wave which i said that and see that black spot how it is moving like this like this it moves and then uh, this is that uh, love wave with just like a snake, something like this, like this. So uh, these are all, you know, uh, as a teaching aid, these are all available in the internet. And then animal tracking helps predicting earthquake. Animal tracking, if we make this kind of things, uh, or even there are certain kind of research are going on, as I have mentioned about uh, before or even tracking these how frogs are coming out so there are many such precursors are there or signals are there but uh, where when what magnitude these three where the specific location when and what magnitude these three things specifically has not yet come so that is why people are more towards moving towards the early warning or catching some signals that which uh, uh, are being uh, discussed over here and also uh, how uh, people are uh, even uh, you know, how people like in a crowded place and other things uh, what you see that we are all doing this kind of activity so uh, but all this shaking can be made into some futuristic or some kind of you know we can label them feature feature one to feature two, and then we can cite, we can get certain trend and pattern. So there are many ways using statistics, that is artificial intelligence, AI, ML, uh, and all this uh, big data, all are helping us. Even Facebook, uh, I was like uh, in a crowded place or in an area that, uh, what kind of signal that we are getting, sometimes signal goes out of, out of sync or out of synchronization. So in that case, uh, how our mobile phone uh, gives a response or uh, even telephone companies that they get certain kind of, even sometimes, you know, our mind and body and becomes very much erasive. Some, uh, some of the things that mind becomes sometimes very much shaken. So there are 
lot of psychological and psychosocial observation, not only in animal, but also in our activity and the way that our brain reacts or acts. So there are, as I said that in the beginning, 35 plus precursors are there. These are all, you know, uh, included into that. And they are all inclusive, but at the same time, each one has got their own way of observations and decision making. Making a homogenized model or interaction between them is a really, that is a tough task, but with the new innovations that are coming up and, and lots of statistical instrument, statistical information taken. Uh, even Google also has come up in this area uh, that where recent uh, report is that, uh, that even 70% cases, even this kind of data, statistical data, taken from various parts and like it is being shown here, uh, they are able to tell something uh, very much uh, with uh, corrective manner. So we expect early warning, mobile alert, SMS, WhatsApp, email, breaking news in TV channel, telephone call by government, friends, media, huh? siren, loudspeaker, calling bell, and then live sharing of Google map, so many things that we can like we Google map we share while in an Uber or while going on the road. And shaking ringtone in smart. This is what we want in our smartphone that we are a smart people. Uh, we have become smart people and we are having a smartphone. So we expect that all that areas of collaboration, scientists, geoscientists, geochemical, and, and then uh, total, electric, uh, total electron counts and ionosphere, uh, and then volcanic eruptions and the buildings that we are living, location that we are doing, the activity that we are doing. But ultimately, we want a shaking tone at least into a mobile phone. Whether internet is there or not, that we don't carry. But in most of the time, we know that our, uh, our uh, this information dissemination infrastructure, they are first vulnerable. They are so much vulnerable that forget about internet or mobile phone receiving call. So there are many ifs and buts. Uh, in fact, it is not so uh, easy task, but some country they have become champion in this. Some of the devices are already available. I will show you some of those devices, how mobile phone are being integrated in a locality and area, uh, not only through WhatsApp, other things, but mobile signal and mobile is having uh, all this, uh, all this uh, measuring devices inside it. Uh, like vibration that we, it has accelerated electromagnetic signal also it can receive even now lidar camera laser and everything has been integrated and many of the you know health uh, oriented uh, some of the smart devices are also there the, who can uh, which can uh, check our heartbeats and almost 50 60 parameters they are able to tell in advance uh, through through our mobile phone and through some kind of sensors and biosensors and things are integrated with the uh, there are many health, many of the mobile phones are having their health uh, related app as well as some kind of data that we provide them and it gives us what is our BMI and so many things. So several natural warning signs have been proposed ranging from frog behaviors to cloud pattern and there remains no known way to robustly determine when and or where the earthquake might occur prior to its structure. I think um, we, I have created a, enough space for Kostovji and Shwekarji uh, to, to, to take this uh, uh, discussion further. And I think, uh, let me, however, detecting tremor soon after they occur and immediately distributing alert messages to areas most likely to experience strong shaking is a realistic and promising alternative. So this is what that uh, I think I tried. And then earthquake early warning algorithm contributes to the shake alert system developed by the USGS to provide alert to the US West Coast, in California and this area. Public alerts via wireless emergency alerts and third party cell phone apps such as MyShake, Shake Alert LA, LA means Los Angeles, and uh, Quake Alert USA are currently available in the California. Uh, the ability to predict earthquake obviously would be effective, but the nucleation and rupture propagation of earthquakes are complex processes which are controlled by many factors. Some of them I have elaborated in the previous uh, in the 
in my presentation. Because of this complexity, reliable short-term quake prediction currently is not possible. This is just a, Kanamori is a very famous scientist from Japan. And many scientists, they, they are having this kind of view. But with their artificial intelligence and the kind of device that uh, the team over here in the panel that they are making, along with the existing one, I think there is a change that we, uh, we, we see that some innovation uh, will come very soon. Uh, so, uh, all these things I have described, destructive, the physical basis of earthquake early warning system is that destructive S wave and surface wave travel at about half the speed of the P waves and velocity of seismic waves and are much slower than signals transmitted by the internet, GSM, telephones or radios. Because, you know, uh, our internet and other things, they move at the speed of almost light, but seismic waves, they travel at the speed of three to six kilometer per second. So there is a huge scope detecting the earthquake early to the location that were likelihood of occurrence of earthquake, which I have shown not only in the geographical geo plot, where we put all those red dot at the same time, online records that which are being displayed in the global earth map, that which are being updated with the color code and magnitude and location, which is live, like today's I have shown. So this, when with all these things together, then with so many data being generated by 70,000 plus seismic station, and plus many more by some of the sensors and some of the uh, other uh, like uh, mobile phone and other things, all integrated together would definitely bring us closer to the prediction, uh, product, uh, say early warning or prediction of the earthquake. So uh, I would not take much time and, and now let us uh, go for some, oh, already 4.30, uh, network-based warning, geodetic network, and then uh, it is all uh, CIS and shake alert, funding the development of earthquake early warning, how it is done, some example taken from the various publication, the path to shake alert, like in USGS that they have taken, how they have taken, and what to do with after alert, slowing the train to prevent de derailment. I have shown stopping the train, elevators at the nearest floor are opening their door, opening fire hose doors, firehouse doors so that they are not stuck shut, and then throttling uh, water utility walls to prevent emptying the reservoir, activating backup generators at the hospital to ensure continued service, and also some of these things, uh, this uh, like when some kind of alert is there, then this car should not go. This should find out automatic, this should come out, fire station, they should come out and then train should stop. So all these things are listed over here. And of course, uh, there are what happens after the things that is not the today's discussion, but wanted to show that, uh, that how uh, in March 11, uh, 2000, 11 earthquake tsunami m 9.1 magnitude came and how they have able to, they have been able to cope up with that shelter and all those arrangement and finally uh, stand alone real time earthquake early warning system installed in indonesia uh, this is stand alone and if it comes and telephone all together in school colleges what are the things to be done so this is what i wanted to show finally with all these things uh, that we have discussed, I want to show this last slide over here is that uh, with all that we have discussed and we have uh, shown over here that globally that how uh, scientists have been working together along with the public feedback and everything, uh, that this is one of the nice uh, say projections uh, about the earthquake research and how we should inculcate the habit of uh, taking this into our way of life. Is that an earthquake happened February 28 in 2001 during Washington uh, in at the Washington and then there was in the scientific science museum there was a pendulum lying over there and that earthquake has generated a kind of pattern over here and uh, so whether with all this discussion for the last two hours and then whoever are there on the online and with the kind of scientist instrumentation funding investment research papers, journal publication, and then 
uh, use of uh, you know shake a lot system so many things have been done whether you should enjoy uh, how a rose can be made uh, or remake it by creating an earthquake over here by shaking a table and enjoy that uh, the rose that which is just before us in the second photograph uh, so there is a lots between the cup and tea and so that is where that uh, i think uh, the whole society and nature and all, all together with our own understanding and with our own stand in this art to survive uh, it is up to us how, how we take it as individually together as well as globally thank you very much thank you sir i completely understand that good things often takes time and uh, within this uh, two hours i think it's very hard to uh, make all the participants uh, well uh, understood about the topic you have showcased very well explanatory uh, i think uh, presentation and from very scratch that how earthquakes occur how, what is the nature of the waves how it works its working principle its mechanism you have explained it a very well mannered and you linked all the uh, dots like from earthquake to the early warning to its execution so uh, it's thank you sir and uh, and i i must thank all the like distinguished speakers and the participants to uh, dedicatedly show their patience for this webinar even we are running out of time so thank you sir and uh, i must say today is your last webinar and uh, you have uh, leave a legacy towards this uh, webinar put your heart and soul to this webinar uh, actually you are uh, like completely a uh, wind behind this resounding success without not taking much time i would request uh, to uh, share your expertise kostav sir and uh, whatever you uh, have done i want to just uh, uh, request you to please showcase your work for our participants yeah thank you so much uh, and uh, thanks to chandan sir for a uh, elaborate uh, presentation it covered a lot of things and uh, precursors and about earthquakes and also about uh, uh, you know totally we came to know about so many aspects happening all over international uh, uh, science frontier so now uh, uh, with permission, I like to share my screen and I like to show you. Uh, uh, if you can give me some. Yeah, 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 yeah sure, sir. Sure, sir. Can I now share? Yes, sir. Sure, you can share. Yeah, you can click. Let's share. Uh, I think uh, you need to give me a, a co-host uh, presenter or something. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, share your presentation uh, with me in WhatsApp. I'll I'll present over here. Is it? Uh, okay. Please enjoy presentation. Yeah. One second. I'm just, uh, I actually did not get the permission for shared till now, but I'm sharing it to you. Uh, just a second, sir, check. just a second. Uh, I have the share here. Yeah, I have the share, but it says that, uh, can't share unless the host or a co-host. Just, just a second, sir. Just a second. Just a second. Yeah. Yeah, I think now uh, I'm able to share. Just one second. Just try one, sir. Yeah, it is now I'm able to share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now is it visible right now? Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay, so I'll not take much of the time. I think a lot of uh, 
attendees are there online and every, everybody is waiting for some new uh, uh, stuff. So this is air ionization monitoring system. And with this system, we are trying to uh, have a precursor for the earthquake signals which we are receiving. So I'll briefly run you through the system and uh, Saikat is also there. Uh, he has joined us from Shiliguri. And uh, uh, one system is installed at his uh, uh, campus out there in his uh, residential campus. And uh, we are trying to pick up signals uh, throughout that region from Nepal and uh, Northeast uh, states, we are getting a lot of signals. So uh, when I say it's a system, so I'll just show you like, uh, what is the system? Uh, the system looks like this. This is uh, one of the uh, very crude system, which we are showing you out here, but uh, in a professional world, it is uh, uh, quite different. It's a very small uh, 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 Raspberry Pi based system. Uh, as there are a lot of students in this uh, uh, participants today. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi system, which is connected to a ground antenna. So on the right hand side of the screen, you see the ground antenna. On the left hand side, you see a system. Obviously, there are uh, power uh, supplies and uh, you know solar, solar power backups and everything is there for this system. So what it is actually, so we, we, we have a monitoring unit. Uh, this is, you know, it's a schematic of the entire system. Uh, just for understanding, we have got a monitoring unit. Uh, then in the center, we have got our data logger and the processing units. And uh, we have got antennas and sensors connected to this uh, uh, data logger unit. And it processes the signal which comes through the sensor. From, from that, uh, the monitoring system uh, gives us uh, some uh, graphical representation of the data. And uh, we are getting signal from this stations uh, almost about uh, uh, two hours before the event is happening. So uh, what uh, uh, we, we, we had a different uh, uh, opinion about uh, earthquakes, like as the earthquake happened, uh, the TV goes live or maybe the mobile is going live at that time, giving a ringtone and all. So in our, uh, uh, early warning system, we are detecting the uh, signals about uh, two hours or one and a half hours uh, before it happens. So we can uh, call it as a pre warning and uh, I'll show you the signals like this is the place where the station is there. Uh, if you see the map, it's uh, uh, just uh, Shiliguri is uh, uh, pointed out here. If you can see, it's a very critical location. And this is how uh, we will analyze one signal uh, which happened on 3rd of October, uh, very recently, 3rd of October 23, there was a 6.2 magnitude earthquake uh, which struck uh, Western Nepal. Uh, it was 6.2 in Western Nepal, but the station picked up the signals. You can see we, we get a signal in terms of uh, this red line. Uh, are you able to see uh, this red line? This is a graph which is coming up. And uh, if you see this blue line, uh, this blue line is uh, where the graph went down. So this is a ionosphere, uh, you know, uh, we are measuring the voltage of the air ionization. And we suddenly see a dip in this uh, voltage out here. Uh, so it dropped by almost about 2.2 millivolt. And this happened, uh, almost about 190 minutes before the earthquake uh, of 6.2 magnitude happened at that time. So suddenly in the whole day, if you say this is actually plotted against the timeline of that day, uh, suddenly there is a voltage drop. So we, we can say that uh, some event is going to happen at this time. And we recorded this in the station. We, 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 we have got a, a channel in Facebook. Uh, we do uh, publish everything through that also. Uh, I'll show you another event, uh, like uh, this is one event. The second event is uh, November 10th, 2022. A 5.7 magnitude earthquake uh, struck Eastern Arunachal Pradesh. And out here also you see that 230 minutes before the earthquake happened, we, we got uh, different uh, fluctuations in the signal uh, which we are plotting. Uh, we see different uh, signal uh, levels out here. 
uh, 2.5 millivolt signal went up, then 1.1 uh, millivolt signal came down. And after that, uh, 230 minutes after that, uh, there was a 5.7 earthquake happening in eastern Arunachal. So that's our second uh, example out here. And I, I'll show you the third one, uh, like 6th of January 2020, uh, 4.2 earthquake struck northern Bhutan. Out here also, if you see the graph on the right hand side, it is showing a lot of uh, change of voltages of the air ionization. Uh, it changes change is almost about 2.4 millivolt and after that almost about 316 minutes after that signal change we we have an earthquake which is almost about uh, 4.2 uh, uh, in the scale so uh, we have uh, uh, devices uh, which which can predict this and we are publishing it through earthquake prediction research project uh, you can search this on uh, facebook and you can uh, come across to the project uh, research uh, papers and everything out here and uh, we we are trying to get uh, uh, more of this data uh, what we want from nidm and we are requesting nidm uh, to participate in this type of projects and take it uh, uh, to a village level program and also multiply this type of small uh, stations, independent stations uh, throughout this uh, region so that uh, we, we, we individually get the data and we individually get this type of alerts uh, almost about uh, one and a half to two hours before the event actually takes place. So I'll not take much of the time. Uh, it was almost uh, 4.30. I think uh, now it's almost about uh, 4.40 now. So please do contact us in case of uh, students who are interested and any questions for the day, I'd like to take it up. Uh, but before that, thank you so much uh, for calling us in this uh, webinar. And uh, I'd like to also thank Chandan sir. And uh, Saikat, uh, uh, if you want to tell something about the station and aap uh, ebar bataiye aapka station se wahan se kaise uh, power se connected hai, battery se connected hai, 24 hours wo chal raha hai wahan pe station aur data pick up ho raha hai. So, Saikat, aap ek bar, uh, aapke end se ek bar bataiye. And definitely, sir. Uh, thank you to Pustak uh, sir and Chandan sir. Jo AR Anderson, jo uh, station hai, station basically uh, uh, solar power se power up hai. और टोटल आप हम लोग का जो वन स्टेशन अभी रनिंग कंडीशन में है वो 30 एमपी आवर का जो बैटरी बैंक है उससे पावर अप है और मेनली हम लोग सिग्नल रिसीव करते हैं नेपाल साइड एंड इंडिया का जो नॉर्थ ईस्ट रीजन है उस एरिया का टोटल हम सिग्नल हम लोग सिग्नल पिक अप करते हैं हेलो हां जी हां जी गो अहेड बोलिए है तो जो सर लास्ट लास्ट जो नेपाल में अर्थक्विक हुआ था उसका भी हम लोग सक्सेसफुली 190 मिनट पहले हम लोग सिग्नल में जो एम्पलीट्यूड जो चेंजेस है वो हम लोग डिटेक्ट कर चुके हैं लेकिन अभी एनआईडीएम से एक ही रिक्वेस्ट है जो हम लोग का स्टेशन जो रिक्वायर्ड है वो नंबर ऑफ स्टेशन ज्यादा होने से हम लोग का जो डेटा पॉइंट्स है वो ज्यादा हम लोग डेटा एक्सेस कर सकते हैं और उससे जो एल्गोरिदम है डेटा एल्गोरिदम उससे हम लोग और भी एक्यूरेट जो प्रेडिक्शन मॉडल है वो हम लोग रेडी कर सकते हैं राइट सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच साइकत एंड चंदन सर प्लीज टेक इट अप एंड थैंक्स चंदन सर फॉर कॉलिंग अस एंड थैंक्स टू ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स इन दिस तो ये तो आपने एक बहुत बड़ा स्टेप लिया है आई थिंक ये हम देखेंगे क्या इसको कैसे अभी तो एक ही स्टेशन है यहाँ पे तो कम से कम 20-25 स्टेशन क्योंकि अर्थक्वेक का लोकेशन तो हमें पता है और आपने डिवाइस ऑलरेडी बना चुके हैं और आपने इसका देख करके इसको हम आगे ले जाएंगे जैसे कि ये जो 190 मिनट्स और इतना पहले जो एनोमली और ड्रॉप इन वोल्टेज जो दे रहा है when we will be able to see these things at least uh, surrounding the earthquake kam se kam 3 4 5 6 7 signal mein bhi aise hi hoga to kyunki yes, sometime yes. kya hota hai koi ek siligari mein de raha hai 
उसको ठीक है फिफ्टी परसेंट लोग बिलीव करेगा फिफ्टी परसेंट नहीं करेगा अगर वो सिलीगुड़ी से भी दे रहा है काठमांडू से भी दे रहा है इधर गुवाहाटी से भी देगा तब तो ट्राइंगुलर इसमें मतलब उसमें क्या होगा अरे सेम टाइम तो सेम है हमारे कंट्री टाइम तो सेम है एंड दैट इज वॉट इज द ट्राइंगुलेशन मेथड करके तो देन हम इसका लोकेशन भी आपको ये जैसे अभी एक स्टेशन होने से लोकेशन नहीं पता चलता है लेकिन तीन चार स्टेशन होने से सेम ट्राइंगुलेशन मेथड से जो सेस्मिक उसमें होता है इसी सिग्नल को हम आ, उसमें प्रोग्राम में लेकर के ऑटोमेटिकली वो कहाँ से आया है टाइम वो तो वेरी इजी डिजिटल मैग्नीट्यूड के को लेकर के रिस्टर स्केल से जो करते हैं इट इज वेरी इट इज इट इज देयर इन द सॉफ्टवेयर में भी है तब आपको लोकेशन भी दे दिया जाएगा तो लोकेशन एंड टाइम जब दिया जाएगा देन उसके बाद हम देखेंगे उसमें जो सेस्मिक स्टेशन कुछ जो रिलायबल सेस्मिक स्टेशन है उसको जब लगा देंगे तो वो तीन चार स्टेशन हम उस हिसाब से देर आर सम मोबाइल सेस्मिक स्टेशन आर ऑल्सो देयर तो नॉट ओनली दिस वन बट ऑल्सो मोबाइल सेस्मिक स्टेशन यूज करके हम तब इसका बहुत निश्चित रूप से एक घंटा डेढ़ घंटा दो घंटा पहले से जब पता चल रहा है और जब सेकेंड में चीज कहाँ से कहाँ चला जाता है एंड वी आर हैविंग सो मेनी सोशल मीडिया ट्विटर एंड अदर थिंग इतना सारे जो है चैनल है हजारों चैनल है तो तब तो हमें लगता है देर इज वी कैन ब्रिंग ए वेरी वेरी इनोवेटिव सोल्यूशन और वी कैन हेल्प द नेशनल एजेंसी जो नेशनल सेंटर फॉर सेस्मोलॉजी जो है उनको हम मदद करके उनके क्योंकि वो नोडल एजेंसी है वी कैन हैव ए वेरी गुड यू नो प्रडिक्शन इट इज मोर ऑन प्री वार्निंग रादर इट इज नॉट अर्ली वार्निंग इट इज अ प्रडिक्शन विच यू नो I have spent more than one hour forty-five minutes uh, about how it is not possible. Itna complex hai. Lekin itna chota chiz se agar ye com ye ham ek kuch aur data iska data to ek dum exactly three four hours ke liye aap jo dikha rahe hain, it is giving a clear cut signal or continuous record hai. Or aapne solar panel laga kar ke isko continuous uske kya hai? Usme kewal battery se supply karna hai. Battery hai, loved hai. so we can take it to the next level and more station and help uh, this matlab ye jo yahan pe jo manav jivan mein jo ek maine shuru mein jaise na earthquake ek aisa hai jiske bare mein early warning ka prediction uh, it is so uh, so much uh, difficult even today humne kam se kam 50 parameter parameter bataya 35 plus precursor ka list hai aur iske baad एक अगर ये भी जोड़ जाएगा प्रिकर्शन नहीं इट इज गिविंग अ डायरेक्ट इंडिकेशन दैट टू ऑथेंटिकेटेड बाय नंबर ऑफ स्टेशन एट द सेम टाइम तब क्या है देन वी कैन जोड़ सकते हैं इन चीजों को जो एग्जिस्टिंग चीजों से राइट सर राइट दैट्स व्हाई वी वी नीड योर गाइडेंस एंड रीच आउट टू डिफरेंट पार्ट्स फॉर दिस प्रोजेक्ट इवन कॉलेज स्टूडेंट कैन टेक अप वन ऑफ द स्टेशंस एंड पुट इट ऑन डिफरेंट कॉलेज एंड स्कूल्स सो दैट वी हैव गॉट मच मोर डेटा पॉइंट्स इट कंट्रीब्यूट्स टू द नेटवर्क एंड कंफर्मेटरी वार्निंग सिग्नल्स एट लीस्ट वन एंड हाफ आवर्स बिफोर द इवेंट हैपेंस राइट सर यस सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर आपने बहुत ही कम टाइम में बहुत ही अच्छा काम प्रदर्शन करा है डेफिनेटली लाइक इफ हम मोर स्टेशन इंक्रीज कर पाएंगे तो एट दिस लेवल विलेज लेवल प्लानिंग एंड माइक्रो लेवल प्लानिंग इज क्वाइट रिक्वेजाइट इन ऑर्डर टू गेट द मोर एक्यूरेट डेटा सेट एंड ऑल सो थैंक यू सर फॉर कमिंग एंड एक्सपैंड लाइक प्रेजेंटिंग योर मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग वर्क ओवर हियर definitely uh, this will leads to more increasing number of uh, the data stations for your work yes thank you sir sir uh, uh, i think ansul sharma and ashok kumar dhingra has raised your question yeah yes sir yeah ansul sir are you there please uh, unmute yourself and directly ask your question sir i think he is still on mute hmm yeah na sikna timre bhi anna bhi aasan gara
Yeah, we can hear you now. Mm -hmm. And so, no. so please ask your question. Just unmute yourself. I think we can try with Ashok. Yes, sir. Ashok, sir? Dingra, sir, you can ask Unmute your question. Okay, there are 84 participants are there. Do three logo ko randomly is me leke a jao. Ek karke, because ye to ham isle koi webinar me yehi onse jaa rahe kya wo directly. Kya hal hai? Huh? Jeeting ra sir. How are you? Ah, I'm fine. Okay. Acha ye abhi December me retirement hai apki ki next year hai. ये यहां पे पूछने का समय नहीं है <laughs> ये अभी रिकॉर्ड हो रहा है दिंगरे सर आप अपना क्वेश्चन पूछिए अपना क्वेश्चन पूछिए नहीं एक्चुअल में क्या है कि मैंने काफी देर से ज्वाइन किया <coughs> मुझे आज जो है ना कुछ भी समझ नहीं आ पाया बिल्कुल ओके okay. मेरे भाई चांस लग गया हमने और ये चंदन सर आए हुए भैया पता ही लगा मैं बिल्कुल ठीक <laughs> है हां अभी कल परसों कल परसों याद कर रहे थे आपको अच्छा 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 नकुल सर के साथ ओ नकुल साहब के साथ या 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 चलो ठीक है कैरी ऑन सर हां ठीक है धन्यवाद मिलते हैं ओके जी ओके सर शुड वी क्लोज द सेशन हां या आई थिंक देयर इज नो क्वेश्चन या ठीक है क्योंकि 2 घंटे हो गए यस सर so thank you all participants and uh, for bearing us even we are exceeding the time and uh, please do visit our NIDM training portal give your valuable feedback and try to download your certificate from Monday onwards and uh, this is our last webinar so that's why Gosar has uh, screwed all his time to explain from scratch to the execution level. So thank you all and being a continuous support for uh, running this webinar series and definitely we will meet in some other topics uh, but probably not with go sir so thank you sir for uh, making this initiative a resounding success and thank you uh, kostav sir and saikat sir for joining and uh, you. expressing your very nice initiative over here and definitely it will uh, lead to making our resilient uh, community towards earthquake and uh, the people will uh, definitely learn that not to frighten with earthquake but uh, take some measures to leave with earthquake with some uh, uh, some there is some one kahavat na that uh, earthquake nahi marta hai but the infrastructures jo building se wo kill karti hai logon ko and this uh, systems all these uh, initiatives and technological interpretation will definitely uh, leave uh, like uh, influence people to leave how to leave with earthquake so thank you, sir, yeah. and uh, have you. a great day ahead. Yeah. Thank, you, thank, you. thank you, 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 thank you,